Let's get some analysis on all of this today, a lot of it. George Washington University law professor Jonathan Turley joins us this evening, along with Fox News chief legal correspondent and host of Fox News at Night, Shannon Bream. Uh, thank you both. Jonathan, I want to start with the Cohen case. And these are the charges, the guilty pleas, uh, five counts of tax evasion, one count of making a false statement to a financial institution, one count of willfully causing an unlawful corporate contribution, one count of making an excessive campaign contribution. The most potentially damaging legally, politically, is that campaign viola uh, finance violation. Absolutely. I mean, unless this unidentified candidate is Bernie Sanders, it's going to be bad news. I mean, or you're not paying attention. Because if, if the prosecutors accept what is in this indictment, then the president just became an unindicted co-conspirator. That's that's the simple matter of it. I mean, if if they believe that what's in this indictment is true, and that he was directed to make this payment, they clearly believe the payment was a campaign finance violation. Then the president just became an unindicted co-conspirator, and he could become an indicted co-conspirator depending on the timing and circumstances. Now that's enough to concentrate the mind of any White House lawyer. Uh, this is far more dangerous than what happened with Manafort. The president's right. It's completely separate in that case from him. Cohen is not. Yeah, Shannon, this deals with the payments uh, to adult film star uh, Stormy Dandel Daniels and ex-Playboy model uh, Karen McDougal uh, that Cohen made before the election. Uh, there will be people, uh, there are already out there, arguing that this is not a violation of campaign finance laws. The prosecutor is saying differently. Yeah, I think it's interesting that in this we have a decision by Michael Cohen that he is going to lay out everything that he confesses to in this information and that they've negotiated, pre-negotiated this range uh, of a sentence for him possibly. Uh, but it's interesting that he has said that he's not going to cooperate. That wasn't part of this deal, that he would cooperate with prosecutors. There are many people who say he's actually protecting the president by m not having a big public trial over this, even though it may only have gotten him in criminal trouble. Uh, they say that even though the president may feel a little bit stunned and burned by this today, actually Cohen and keeping this private and agreeing not to help prosecutors is actually a bit of a win for the president. I want to play two sound bites. One is the president on Air Force One being asked about these payments, and then Rudy Giuliani talking about paying back Cohen one after the other. Having something to do with paying some Stormy Daniels woman 130000 I mean, which is going to turn out to be perfectly legal. That money was not campaign money. Sorry, I'm giving you a fact now that you don't know. It's not campaign money. No campaign finance violation. So, so they, they funneled it through the law firm. Funneled through the law firm, and the president repaid it. Oh, I didn't know he did. Yeah. There's no campaign finance law. Zero. So is that the battle line that will be drawn here, Jonathan? It is. I mean, first of all, it's important to keep three things in mind. One is the president's not actually named as, a, as an indicted co-conspirator, but under the facts, it implicates him. Second, Michael Cohen is a perfectly dreadful witness for any fact witness. He has a bad history in terms of statements that he has made. And then third, the defense is, in fact, the definition of the crime. Now, one thing I think to keep in, in mind here is that this has always been a controversial area. They brought these charges against John Edwards, and it failed in court. Now, they did not have someone like Cohen who is saying that I made these payments intentionally with the motivation of influencing the election at the behest of the candidate. That makes it a stronger case than Edwards. But this has always been very controversial as to the motivation. Is it really to influence the election, as Cohen says, or is it more because he's a married man and he wanted to bury the scandal? But, Jonathan, on both of these cases, you know, people... Critics of the Mueller investigation will say this doesn't have anything to do with Russia collusion. This is way outside the boundaries. But are both of these potentially squeeze plays for these two characters, one definitely inside the circle for the last decade? Oh, it definitely is. I mean, the judge in Alexandria said, you're obviously trying to get at President Trump by bringing these charges against Manafort. The problem is that Manafort's a hardened target for Mueller. Manafort can't go to jail for 10 years. He's an older guy 
guy. If he wants a deal, he wants a walk away, and that means a pardon. And only one guy can give that to him. And it doesn't. There's no indication that Manafort is changing from that strategy. All right. When Michael Cohen, uh, Lanny Davis, just moments ago uh, issued a statement. This is Michael Cohen's attorney saying, "Quote: Michael Cohen took this step today so that his family can move on to the next chapter. This is Michael fulfilling his promise made on July 2nd to put his family and country first and tell the truth about Donald Trump. Today he stood up and testified under oath that Donald Trump directed him to commit a crime by making payments to two women for the principal purpose of influencing an election. If those payments were a crime for Michael Cohen, then why wouldn't they be a crime for Donald Trump? If anybody was doubting that the candidate wasn't named, Lanny Davis wanted to make sure we knew. Yeah, and then we get into this question of whether or not a sitting president can be indicted. And this is something that has been debated hotly. There are a couple of Justice Department memos from 1973 and from 2000 that talk about this. Uh, and essentially, the understanding is that you can't indict a sitting president in most normal circumstances. So Rudy Giuliani has said he's had conversations with the Mueller team. And during that, he says they've orally acknowledged to him those DOJ guidelines, uh, what that means, whether they agree to them, whether they would seek some type of exemption or an around. We don't know. But he says they've had that conversation and it's not about indicting a sitting president. He says, according to Justice Department, you can't do it. Meantime, uh, Stormy Daniels attorney Michael Avenatti, who has been out and about in a lot of TV shows, tweeted today, Rudy Giuliani, buckle up, buttercup. You and your client completely misplayed this. The developments of today will permit us to have the stay lifted in the civil case and should also permit us to proceed with an expedited deposition of Trump under oath about what he knew, when he knew it, and what he did about it. We will disclose it all to the public. How much is that a potential problem? Uh, you know, as much Michael's my former student, I, I'll disagree with him in one sense, um, and that is well, that's uh, breaking news right there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I disagree in one sense. I, I, it's very hard to expedite a deposition with a sitting president because they get a great deal of deference, and so there's still a rather long road to hoe. In Although that sense. people look back to the Clinton years and look at uh, Paula Jones and say. That was a deposition. That's right. But what you have now are all these cross and criminal investigations with gitch priorities with the courts and they have to be coordinated. So I don't think you're looking at anything immediate or short term in that sense. But look, this is not a good day. Uh, that what Cohen is saying here directly implicates the President of the United States in what is defined by the United States government as a criminal act of campaign finance violations. Does that mean that he would be indicted in office? There is this great debate. I think it's now moot because Mueller is going to follow the, the policies of the DOJ. But that doesn't necessarily help things. You know, the statute of limitations is still out there. He could still bring a charge after the president leaves office. But more importantly, he can detail a criminal conspiracy in a report to Congress, just as the House of Representatives just might switch parties. Right. And I guess it brings us back to the fight over the campaign finance law and whether this, if it all happened as Cohen pleads to, is that violation. There are a former FEC uh, chairman who says it, it isn't, Bradley Smith. Um, obviously, Giuliani is making that case. And you wonder if that's where the Trump lawyers are going to go. Well, and you remember that Judge Ellis, in the case that just wrapped up for Manafort in Virginia, said before the trial started, I think that the special prosecutor shouldn't have an unfettered power because what you may be doing here, even if you're not going to be able to get to the president, is to lay out something that would allow for impeachment of the president. So all of these different investigations, the Stormy Daniels, uh, Avenatti stuff, all of that could be feeding into, if the Democrats take the House, giving them plenty of material to say, look, we've got one thing after another that is in some way connected to the president. This Cohen stuff is the worst of it. And maybe that's enough for them to say we take power, we start impeachment. And we don't know about what we've seen today if Cohen will cooperate with Mueller on other fronts when it comes to money or Russia or other things. That's right. But Cohen's out there. I mean, he's, he'll take a deal if it's good enough. He's made that clear. Uh, so he can still have Mueller come to him and say, look, you're looking at six years. I can cut it in half if you have a deliverable. Now, today, he said he has a major deliverable. Now, the fact is he ultimately gave Mueller what he needs today. He already went on the record to say, essentially, that President Trump ordered him to make this payment. So he's locked in as a witness. The the question is, does he have something more? Are there are some of those tapes relevant? Is Mueller now going to look at him and say, I'm willing to do a side agreement with you, give you a partial deal to ask the court to reduce your sentence? All of that is possible. Does Mueller have more power today? 
Absolutely. Exponentially? He's a, yes, he's in a much better and a much stronger position. Shannon, Jonathan, thank you. Shannon, we'll see you tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, Fox, Fox News. News at night. Thank you both. Thank you.